Uh, thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, Bulls have won uh, two in a row. And we'll play again this Thursday night at Kent State uh, on ESPN3 at 7 o'clock. So, uh, coach is available for any questions. All right, coach, it's uh, Kent State. Uh, let's start with their defense. Just what stands, obviously, they're number two in the league, and what stands out when you uh, You know, they've had an excellent year, I think, you know, as a whole defense. When you, especially when you, when you put in together their, their non conference schedule of two Big Ten teams and Marshall. Uh, I think they've definitely been tested and, and still to be ranking as high as they do in the conference says a lot. Uh, I think I sound like a broken record maybe, but uh, again, up front, uh, another front four and, and that rotates even, you know, much like we would, like we'd been doing a little bit. We haven't quite as much made the last couple of games, but they're, they're going 10 deep in, in some areas and, and, and they're able to keep bodies there. So that front seven um, definitely is uh, impressive and, uh, I think they're getting um, good safety play. And, you know, they got a corner that I think is up there in interceptions. They lead, you know, uh, one guy leads the league in sacks. So again, they're they're making a lot of plays there. They blitz uh, attacking a lot. Or, yeah. or... they're mixing things. I tell you one thing, they've done a nice job of Mark. Is uh, you know they're they're sometimes in a four man front, sometimes in a three man front, and it's not by down or distance as much sometimes. So. Um, they, they give you a lot of different looks that can confuse you and cause uh, cause disruption uh, along just with uh, the quality of play. So that's with the Leo is sort yeah, of stand yeah, up. Yeah, they will at times and at times. And sometimes he's, he's a stand up Russian and sometimes and he's, he's a, a back, backer and, and they're doing different things that way. So um, uh, impressed with, you know, you, you, again, with how they've played, but yet how they're also been able, I think, uh, cause some confusion. The Apache in here. That's basically a weak field sideline. Yeah, yeah, they call it. yeah. They, yeah, everybody has their okay. their names for them as they, they kind of use their different personnel and. So. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, I mean, Jordan in the backfield has been a clear revelation for this team. I mean, just back to back career games. But with Anthony coming back to uh, closer to 100, percent it has to be a good problem to have in that backfield. Right? Yeah, uh, you know, Jordan Johnson has really stepped up for us. Um, Again, you know, getting a lot of carries and being productive, especially I think in the second half. Uh, Anthony's moving, moving a lot better, um, getting closer and closer to 100%. So, uh, a, a good problem to have. And uh, but we're going to need both both of these guys down the stretch. And uh, finding ways to use them both uh, is is definitely. Uh, uh, a good problem to have. They're number two against the run, so this. Is yeah, it's going to be. A, yeah, and it's going to be. You know, in our our. Ability to be consistent uh, running the ball is is something that we've been very up and down with, and uh, it's going to be one of those games that we're gonna we're gonna have to find ways to get tough yards and establish a running game. It's definitely going to be a key to this game. Andy has, uh, you know, you've had stretches. I'm trying to think, but I mean, of games, maybe even games you won, Ohio, where that running. Uh, hasn't been real productive, but you've stuck with it. I mean, is that something you and Andy talk a lot yeah. about? That like fight through the dry spell? Yes, it, it is, uh, Mark. Because you know we have found even at our last stop, uh, you know, even late in the seasons and game 15 and things like that against quality opponents, that we felt that abandoning a running game is 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 really making yourself one dimensional. And sometimes uh, it it may not be statistically pretty. And things, but but showing that you haven't abandoned it is is um, you know is something we we believe in that's going to pay off sometimes in games as long as the game is still within reach or or haven't been decided and you know that's probably on me a little bit uh, last week of you know six seven minutes to go up by two scores you know you're trying just to you know shorten that game up it's it wasn't necessarily run the clock out it was it's really just shorting shortening the game and and. 35 to 39 seconds between snaps and at six minutes if you can just get one you know get one first down and, and we weren't able to do that but getting the ball back doesn't mean you're going to stop that philosophy you see um split carries between jordan and Ed, uh, there's no it's it hasn't really been series it hasn't been carries or plays we're going to find uh you know situations to use them both and um the, the thing is maybe who's got the hot hand sometimes and, and I think both guys have handled that well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily like rotating quarterbacks, but I think there's also a point you, you got to let backs get into a little bit of a rhythm too to understand the flow of the game. And uh, I think a game like this is one that you're going to need both. Do you feel Joe is back to being Joe? 
I'm not quite sure exactly what well, you I mean, mean by what point of the year he wasn't. He season. wasn't Joe, but uh, you know what I mean. Production wise, I mean, he he just seems to be really locked in, maybe more so than he has. All I think year. so. You know, at the same time, you'd you know. You know, why did he throw an interception for a touchdown? You know, and you know Joe's been steady. I, I haven't seen Joe waver in this offense or have doubt of what he what he's doing or what we're doing. He handles things well. Uh, again, I, I don't know if I've been around a guy who stays in the pocket almost. I think like Andy says, almost to a fault sometimes. I mean, he takes some shots. He still gets up. I've never seen him, like I said, get discouraged or or you know with himself, his teammates, with play calling, whatever. I, I think that's what makes him such a such a great leader in, in what we're doing. But I think he's comfortable in, in, in what in what's happening and what's being asked of him. And, um, you know, we're going to need that here uh, Thursday and, and, and the other three games. How have you felt about your run defense lately? You know, I, I think we've been, you know, solid. Would I like it better? Uh, yeah, I, I always do. I, I think... Uh, you know, again, our consistency of late, I guess, if you if you're talking the last game, because no, I, I but, but but I mean, I thought it was outstanding against Ohio. You know, it's a way to. Uh, I don't think it's we've we've reevaluated a little bit of the rotation, and it's not just a clear, special early part of the game. Sometimes that can be weather, it can be whatever. If we feel, um, you know, um, some guys can play more snaps, it's not as much, and and I think that sometimes just like on the other side of the ball, it gives you a little more continuity and flow of the game too. You've got still got nine guys averaging twenty percent of the snaps or more in the defensive line. Real, yeah, on the defensive line in the last five games. So, what do you think about sticking to that? Uh, what you? I think we will. Yeah, yeah. I rotation still still healthy. I think when you when we I look at total snaps. Probably like your county is that you know when you get defensive linemen over 45 in a in a game, whether it be a 65 snap or a 90, I, I think you've got to have concerns to, depending on how how long they're out there. But that can like a lot of things can be misleading because um, depending on if they're three and outs or five and five, you know that yeah. th that thing is when they're out there for those long drives and you leave them out there. I think that's when a guy really tires and he doesn't have the same in the fourth quarter. But uh, yeah, we're going to still try to rotate at, at least eight, and then Kyrill will be used in situational uh, situ and usually passing situations. Back to back Thursday night games make yeah. it any easier to prepare? You to uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, more importantly, we're back to seven days. Days of the week, we just kind of get get confused and you know what day we're supposed to take out the garbage and go to church and things like that. I, I think, but uh, you know, you're you're back to seven days and how you normally. Um, uh, you know, go about those things. It, it's it's when you're working on the shorter schedule when you're trying to compact some things. But yeah, I, I think so. I, I think we're back to a regular. You know, t today is is a Thursday to us, so we we've got a good schedule that way. And but it it's interesting and it's and it's a learning process. But I, I guess sometimes I think another good thing about it is. You know, you've played X amount of games, and sometimes you need, you do need just like sometimes you change up your practice schedule just slightly, and you look to tweak it. I think for us as coaches too, it's a it's a new way and a new challenge. And then their offense, their last uh, in a bunch of categories. Uh, in the yeah, yeah, I'm still impressed though with uh, their young skill. Uh, I think they're good in you know, out in space, and uh, you know they're playing a redshirt quarterback and, and redshirt freshman quarterback, and and I think sometimes with that. Uh, you know, there's there's flows of that, and again, you look at some of the schools. I'd said who they've played against. Uh, they played against a lot of good football teams. They've had two weeks to prepare for this game, so uh, again, statistically, don't get too caught up in that um, as much because uh, we're we're still going to need to play well, and they've had the extra time to prepare and 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 analyze us. You said after the Ohio game, you hoped that would be a springboard to catapult you. Yeah. Now you have another win under your belt. Do you notice a difference, confidence, and swagger, and just the feeling around the team now? Yeah, well, I think there's definitely in, in all of us a, a little different air than there was uh, after from from these last two weeks versus uh, after Central and uh, and Bowling Green for sure. There's a level of confidence that if we we can put some things together. Um, but I've learned quickly in this in this conference that uh, it's a matter of how you match up. It's it's a one at a time type of thing because everybody matches up just slightly differently, strengths versus weaknesses, and and uh, you know uh, there's you know just like there was a, a month ago, 
a handful of plays that, that prevented us from, uh, you know, that put us at two and four. And uh, you know, playing a team that's three and five, I'm sure they've got they've got an overtime game. They've got a close loss against Minnesota. They let alone other games that they they know they could be sitting in a very good situation. So we need to make sure we're ready. But I think our confidence level as a whole um, is continuing to to rise. All right, thank you, everyone.